Hello and welcome back to this Tantrum House board game review. In this video we're going to talk about the game Great Western Trail Argentina. <laughs> Welcome back, my name's Jonah, and like I said, this video is for the game Great Western Trail Argentina by Eggert Spiel. In this game, you're actually traveling the vast Anstancia of Argentina in the late 19th century in order to go over the plains of the Pampas to deliver your cattle to the last train station in Buenos Aires. I was able to actually play this game with a few other members of Tantrum House, so let's bring one of them out and see how much they remember and what they liked about this game. Okay, so I'm back with Sarah. So go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone and tell them what you do for Tantrum House. So my name is Sarah Meadows and I do reviews on the podcast and I help run the Kickstarter campaigns and ship all the rewards out to all the backers. Oh, I love it. So we recently got an opportunity to play the game Great mm -hmm. Western Trail Argentina. So technically speaking, this is a remake of the original Great Western Trail, which actually has been done twice to my mm -hmm. knowledge. Yep. So my question for you was, have you ever played the original? I have not. Okay, no problem. So this is your first experience with Great Western mm -hmm. Trail. Yes. So give us your initial first experience, even table presence. What did you think of the game? Um, I definitely enjoyed the artwork for this one much more than uh, the original version of the game. I, I liked the box cover a lot more, um, and I think they did a decent job with the artwork. I agree with you. For my experience, when we got the game out, when we set it all the way up, I realized that this game requires a significantly bigger table than mm -hmm. some games. There's a lot of pieces in this mm -hmm. game, uh, a lot of cards, a lot of player boards uh, mm -hmm. alongside the main board. So you just have to have a little bit of space in order to get this game to your table. Yeah. Okay, Sarah, I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Give me a ballpark guess on what you believe the weight of this game is on BGG. Uh... I would say a 3.6. You're pretty close. Oh, am I? Yeah, it's 3.82 according I to that maybe website. a little higher, but I was like, ah, uh, we figured it out part way through. Yeah, we yeah. did pretty good. And what about, about how long do you think it'll take someone to play this game? First timer. Um, first time, I would make sure you have way more time than what the box says. It's going to take you a little while to learn how to play, especially if you have not played the original game. So I would give yourself a good half hour to learn it, and then um, depending on your player count, I would add extra time for a higher player count. Our game went really long, but we also took some breaks in between and made sure we were getting all the rules correct. So. That's right. So according to the outside of the box, and of course websites like Board Game Geek, it says you're going to need 75 to 120 minutes to play. I agree with Sarah. If it's your first time playing through the game, it's probably more on that 120 side. And I'd if you've got more, <laughs> more <laughs> players, like three, four... Uh, players and your higher player count, you'll probably need that longer time yeah. as well. But if you're playing with just a few players, and of course Great Western Trail Argentina does include a solo mode, mm -hmm. then maybe you can get that down to around the 75 minute mark. Okay, some of the mechanics in this game are deck building, mm -hmm. hand management, and set collection. Speak to that a little bit. Did you see those mechanics come through when we played? Um, I felt like the resource management would be a better description of this. Okay, why do you think that? Um, you are trying to move through the map on the board and strategically stopping at places where you would like to take those specific actions. So it's almost a rondel action, action selection based on which trail you use on the map. And then it's managing your money and being able to buy the cattle that you need for the set collection part. Um, the deck building portion, not so much. If I'm not adding a lot of cards for deck building, um, I would call it more action selection or using the cards in my hands to pay for things. Um, there's a lot of spaces on the board that require you to have a specific color and that would be more action selection I think than using it as a deck builder. I'm not buying 
there's not a lot of opportunity to buy cards like you would for a traditional deck builder. Sure. So that's kind of a stretch for me. I'd agree with you. I was assuming because I read some of the rules, I looked on a website, watched a few other videos before we played this game, that there would have been more cards cycling through mm -hmm. for a game classified as a deck builder. Now, by definition, I think they've got it correct that yeah. technically it is a deck builder, but it's not the typical style of deck builder that you see where you're yeah. going through a lot of cards. And for me, uh, that was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, they're not wrong by saying deck builder, but I'm, I'm thinking actually this game, in my opinion, was actually more of a race to get to the end. Now, I know that Great Western Trail, the original and the remake, are not so much of a race mm -hmm. because once you get to the end, I believe you're putting your cattle, your cows on trains and there's unlimited spots on those trains. However, in this game, Great Western Trail Argentina, you're getting to the end, you're putting your cattle or cows on boats and those boats will leave at some point during the game. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it's almost like a first come first serve when you get to Buenos Aires and you can put your cattle on those boats. And so for me, it was more a race than it was deck building. Although you have to have the cards in your hand in order to play them on the boat. So uh, again, by definition, I think they got it right, but I didn't see the traditional deck building. If you were really thinking deck building, I'm gonna build my hand up, I'm gonna manage it appropriately, I'm gonna play these cards when I need it. It's not that from this particular game. Yeah, I had a little bit of tension with the boat portion. Um, I had some end game goals that were secret to me that I had gotten along the way in the game. And one of them was um, getting specific boats from specific, uh, the different ports. And if those get taken up, there's not anything you can do about it. So it's definitely, uh, you, you have to weigh pros and cons on which boat to put your cattle on because if you do one that's going to go out right away you're going to get some bonuses and resources from it but you are going to be probably getting something that's not as great i so. agree sarah tell the folks what your favorite part about great western trail argentina was hmm my favorite part um trying to figure out the best path on the board um, I did not spend a lot of time gaining a lot of, of the more expensive tiles that I could have purchased. And I realized too late in the game that if I had, I probably would have been able to take some better actions. But the actions I did take, I focused a lot on the train when I played and the bonuses I gained from that did give me a lot of end game points. So I was happy with that. but. I had a difficult time getting through a couple portions of the map just because I didn't have the cash I needed to make it through. So yeah. it took me a little bit longer. I was kind of behind everybody else. Now I've heard that in this particular version of the game, money is easier to get than mm -hmm. it was in the other two versions. One of the things that I like most about this particular game is actually the player boards. I'm a big fan of being able to purchase workers in this mm -hmm. in this particular game and playing them on your player board. And these mm -hmm. player boards are pretty cool. They were inset and had spaces for everything. But then as you play things, you're either unlocking new abilities or more enhanced abilities, or you're getting bonuses if you have a significant amount of workers in like each individual row, depending on what they represent. Mm -hmm. And that to me is always a cool part of the game because then it's like, okay, well I didn't do so hot in this game. Well but also based on the fact that I didn't unlock that cool ability that maybe some of the other players locked or that, oh, well that ability really fits my play style and I should have unlocked that one faster. I should have went for that one quicker. And so that was one of the things that brings me back to a game like this of offering replayability because it's like, oh, well I wanna unlock something different or go in a different order or use a couple different other abilities that I wasn't using very much the last time that I played. Uh, I did find that it, you could, depending on what workers come out randomly for the round um, or what's available to you, that it may push you in a different direction. The ones that were available inexpensively to me at the beginning of the game were for the train. And so I was like, I wasn't planning on even doing much with the train. And then I realized, oh, well, I have an advantage over everybody else. I should probably move quickly through this and get some bonuses that are first come, first serve. Okay, Sarah, how do you personally feel gameplay held up to the overall theme of the game? Of getting your cattle, your cows, all the way to Buenos Aires to deliver them? Uh, how, how did the boy, how did, it, how did, how did you feel about it? Um, I felt like it was fine. Uh, 
Some euros feel very distant to the, I mean, the mechanics are the main thing. This one, it seemed to fit a little better than a lot of the games that I've played that are, are heavier euros. Um, the, there wasn't as much focus on the cattle themselves as there were some of the other things going on in the game. There was a lot more with the workers that you've hired along the way than, than the actual cattle. So that was a little bit like I was, oh, this is a deck building about cattle. And we didn't do much of that, I felt like. I didn't have opportunities to purchase cattle as much as I would have liked. Maybe it's because we didn't place those tiles out on the board soon enough in the game. And yeah. so there was a little less of that in our game. So maybe that's why. Sure. I thought the same, but I thought that the overall gameplay really did hold up to the theme. I, I feel like I'm going around, along the trail, right? I've got to deliver them. You get to do this more than one time in the game. Yeah. You'll probably make it to the end of the trail four, five, six times. Just mm -hmm. again, even more than that, or sometimes less than that, depending on your play style. But I really did feel like, yeah, I'm definitely going along the trail. Uh, you've got a couple different paths and opportunities to choose which direction you want to go, which means you can uh, land on buildings that you want to land on or go through buildings that you want to land on and get actions that you want or possibly avoid them if you don't want to do that and so I really did think that overall gameplay held up to the theme really well uh, better than some of the other games that maybe we've played before that you're going well this gameplay doesn't mat really match the theme at all and I think that this one did there are all sorts of dynamic strategies that you can try if you play Great Western Trail Argentina. Will you go for shortcuts that maybe allow you to get your cattle to Buenos Aires faster? I don't know you'll have to let us know the next time that you play it. However, if you're interested in seeing more videos from us here at Tantrum House about this game, about games to come, then you've got to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and we'll see you next time.